Ms. Ms. Shweta, is this your first attempt? This is my second attempt. Second one. Huh? Okay. So, why do you wish to join civil service? Um, so, civil services is one of the most prestigious jobs in the country. And, uh, it offers a lot of diversity in terms of uh, knowledge, in terms of work, as well as the financial stability that you got. So I think it is uh, one of the most desirable jobs that we have in our country. Right. Uh, Ms. Shweta, the uh, Supreme Court had recently given a judgment on the Right to Information Act. Yes. Are you aware of that? Yes. What did the Supreme Court say? It's the right to information. Some I might not. Okay, no problem. Yeah, are you aware of the Right to Information Act as I said? Yes. Okay. Tell me what is the, uh, why was this act introduced and uh, what are the advantages of this act? So basically the act uh, strengthens the democracy part of it because uh, it has given the rights to the citizens to know about the people that are working for them. The representatives of the people who are working in the administration also. So uh, they can ask the questions related to their, uh, uh, I mean whatever their queries are okay. and uh, through RTI the answers are given to them. So it kind of gives them the uh, right to democracy. That, that is. is it working well? Uh, do you have any idea on that? So, uh, yes, sir, it is working quite well, but it has not been extended to, for example, the political parties on which uh, the talks are going on. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But in, in college, you can now ask for your answer sheets, right? Yes. Under the RTIF, which is a very major thing. Earlier it was not being given, but uh, <coughs> a decision was taken. So now in the university or college, you can ask for a copy of the answer sheet. So that is one point. Now, uh, a citizen seeks information under the Act. Can the government department deny the information on any grounds? Yes, sir, when it comes to the security of the nation and if it has to do something uh, with the international relations that we have with other countries. So then uh, the government... There is a clause uh, 8 yes, which sir. lays down various circumstances under which you can deny the information. Yes, right? Now, the Act also talks of these information commissions, right? Yes. There's a Central Information Commission and a State Information Commission. Yes. What is their role? Sir, uh, I think uh, they are the one who responsible for the investigation part, or I might not. No, not investigation. They are basically appellate bodies. Yes. Apart from the fact that they see the general superintendence of the RTI Act, they also have a major role as an appellate body. If you are not satisfied with the information, at the first level you file an appeal in that same department and then if you don't have it, what is the difference between a State Information Commission and a Central Information Commission? Any idea? Sir, uh, so Basically it's what? State government departments, you will approach the state, state and yeah. central government. Now coming to my original, the Supreme Court directive was merely this, was a major decision that the Supreme Court will come under the purview of the RTA. Okay. That was the decision yes, of the former Chief Justice. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, if you've been reading the papers, women officers of the army yes, had approached the Supreme Court yes, and the Supreme Court has given a judgment. Yes, what is that? Sir, now the women can also be the part of the permanent commission. And uh, if they are given the permanent commission, which is all because they were working under the short service commission, and now it has been given that they can also be the part of the permanent commission. Through that, they can also apply for the commanding positions, which has not yet been provided to a Combat roles. Combat roles is what they're looking at. Right? Yes, a combat role. Permanent commissions in 10 branches were allowed by the government last year. Okay. The only difference is that now, they were basically seeking combat roles. Commanding roles means, you know, in the armored corps, infantry, and all, which they were not being given, which they will now be given. Okay, I'll ask you one more question. The government has announced a scheme called Vivaat Se Vishwas. Yes. What is the scheme? 
For example, I have some uh, amount of tax to pay and I could not pay it for some period of time. I mean, uh, the deadline has passed away. So the government has given the timeline of uh, what I remember, I think, 31st March. Until that time, if the person is paying the tax or the money that they have taken, so they don't, have, they will not have no, to pay. You are partially correct. Just go ahead and check. Okay, right. Thank you. Shweta, I am from Ghaziabad. How does the product allocated to Ghaziabad under the one district, one product scheme? Sir, I am not aware of that. Okay. But can you tell me about some industry in Ghaziabad? Some major industry? Sir, there, are, there is a soap industry. Shirumis are there. Paper pulp industries. Can you tell me about what are the government of India schemes for empowerment of women? Sir, uh, first is uh, there this recent one is the uh, she that is the uh, SHW scheme. That is. Uh, Sir, what is the sexual harassment? Sexual harassment at the workplace, which uh, gives the women uh, the right to appeal uh, the Especially whether, first of all, it will be within the company that there will be an IT so that will be an uh, internal company, company where uh, if they face any kind of harassment, they can complain. And otherwise, if they are not being uh, given the right kind of decision there, then they can move to the courts. Then there is a one stop center also uh, where the women are provided with the protection against if they are the so beti bacho beti padhao is one scene where we are trying to motivate the uh, parents to uh, I mean to basically ma uh, fill the uh, child ratio, the sex ratio that is uh, <coughs> so to that and also for educating the women and Pushan Abhiyan is also there yes, uh, and also they are asking for mothers and yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you tell me some some pros and some cons of introducing GM crops in future? So there are multiple pros. Uh, first of all, it's we are all because increasing the population, we need food security as we do not have enough of land. The land is going to remain constant while the population will increase. So food security is one uh, important aspect of GM crop. And also GM crop can lead to the provision of food fortification which can uh, solve the issue of hidden hunger uh, which is quite uh, present in the country and uh, also the issue of uh, like the drought resistant uh, if there are extreme climatic conditions in that also we can grow GM crops. Cons uh, are the, there is a threat of monoculturalism uh, that only one crop will grow and it can take away the wild varieties. Second issue is with the, the pathogens becoming antibiotic resistant. So we will have to apply stronger antibiotics, which can even uh, lead to cause hazard to the humans also. Yes, sir. Uh, recently, Allahabad High Court stated some orders of local administration in case of some notices issued for damages in the context yes, of the CEA. Yes, sir. What was the reasoning given by the High Court? Why were the orders stated? So basically, uh, this uh, CA protest led to led to a lot of uh, public property damage also, to which the government uh, gave the orders of uh, that the people who have caused the damage they will have to pay the money. And uh, what did the High Court say? So that I am. Okay. No uh, they said that can be issued the notice can be issued only by a judge or a claims commission, yes. not by a court. Bhutan biotechnology. What is the status of stem cell research in our country? No, I might not know the exact. Um, but have you studied it? I know about what. Stem what is stem cell research? Yeah, stem cell is basically when this, it's an undifferentiated hmm. cell. When an undifferentiated cell is converted into any type of other uh, functioning, for example. Uh, 
there are uh, cells of skin cells, the organ cells, different kinds of cells. Uh, so, uh, an undifferentiated cell is converted into a differentiated part. So, it can take on the functioning of that part? Yes, ma'am. Alright. So, you are not aware of the research? Yes. Okay, never mind. Uh, you are from UP. Mm -hmm. One hears of a very poor law and order situation in UP. What are the reasons? Ma'am, uh, first of all, is of course the gov governance issues are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in population is quite uh, high in UP. So, that is also an issue that uh, the government. Uh, you must be reading about the encounters. Yes. Encounters, what is your view on the encounters? Police encounters? And I think uh, there, needs, uh, there is a need of police reforms mm -hmm. because uh, police is also the part of the system and they should act under the constitution only uh, within the laws and within the orders. So, and uh, there needs to be a judicial oversight also mm -hmm. uh, after, like for the actions of the police that they have uh, encounters, the reasons behind the encounters. So, for that, judicial oversight is also needed. And uh, there needs to be proper guideline for the police. For the now there was a ban on cow slaughter in our country. Has it affected the society as such and especially the farmers in the It is ma'am. It has How affected, has it affected the, the farmers? Ma'am, there are these allied activities that goes on. So mm -hmm. farmers has to buy these uh, cows uh, for their purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, due to the fake news or due to the what fake news? Ma'am, certain fake news, uh, like, there Just are... Just tell me how does it affect farmers if we ban cow slaughter? Ma'am, if we ban cow slaughter? Will it affect the farmer? Um, I don't think, ma'am, that by banning cow, cow slaughter, we, I mean, of course, that would help uh, the farmer. Not help. How will it affect the farmer? Okay, you said it will help the farmer. How will it help the farmer? You have to keep a old cow and feed the cow even though he is so himself poor that he cannot even treat his family. One. Second, these cows, if they are let out in the streets, then they become a nuisance. They spoil the crops and then they take over the uh, roads and all. Then we have to spend money on cow shallas. Then you talked about some of the other activities. What are the other activities? The leather industry suffers. Yes, ma'am. So in all, we are all suffering because of this. All right. You also had psychology as a subject. So emotional intelligence has become a very important concept. Yes, Why are we giving so much stress on it? Ma'am, because with increasing competition and increasing population also, globalization also, the youth or maybe the other age or group also, they are facing the issue of depression. And uh, what is emotional intelligence? Ma'am, emotional intelligence is the capability to understand one's own emotions and others' emotions also and act accordingly. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yes. So why is it now important to study this concept? Uh, Ma'am, because uh, it is very important to have compassion uh, towards other people also because there are, as I said, that like, there is a lot of issue of depression and stress that is going in society. And if someone is not is not having emotional intelligence, it will be very difficult for us to understand what is the issue that other person is facing, which could lead to some suicides. If we have emotional intelligence, then we can have conversation with the person, make them understand, ourselves understand how to behave with the person. So that would help uh, in the Do you think animal experimentation is justified? Animal experimentation. No, no. Ma'am, uh, although of course it will be needed for uh, clinical analysis and everything, but uh, it will be a, a violence again against the animals if it's not done in a controlled manner. So I think uh, from that perspective, uh, there needs to be proper guidelines and especially uh, at present we can use biotechnology also for the clinical analysis uh, concept. For example, we can create clones <coughs> of the animals. So creating clones is uh, ethical? No ma'am, if there is of course a doubt for them, there is a problem with the way. Ma'am, but uh, if a technology comes mm -hmm. in a society, technology in itself, it, it, in itself is not wrong. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Who was Rosalie Franklin?
So Rosalind Franklin uh, was the scientist and she discovered that the DNA is a double helical stranded. Uh, it's, it's a double helical. Did she get recognition for that? No, sir. Who got? What's in a click? Why did she not get? Uh, sir. Because she was a woman? So there might be a possibility that uh, at that time because it was. <laughs> All right. All right. Now tell me. Uh, <clears throat> Nowadays, we tamper with the human body, right? Yes. We transplant the heart, we transplant the lungs, liver, kidney. Yes. Very soon we will transplant the brain. <coughs> so, if it is okay <coughs> to tamper with the final product, which is the human body, mm -hmm. why is it not okay to tamper with the gene and correct it right there? Because they put that poor scientists behind bars in China who did that. So what is the difference? So there are ethical concerns related to the, the genetic uh, gene editing also. Mm -hmm. Because uh, manipulation of a gene, for mm -hmm. example, the uh, thing that happened in China, mm -hmm. uh, he, although the intent of the scientist that has been told was not wrong mm -hmm. because he was trying to correct certain uh, Disease. diseases yes mm -hmm. sir but because it has not yet been introduced and there are no guidelines related to the gene genetic editing mm -hmm. that is why it was considered as uh, unethical mm -hmm. because there were no laws which were there how to do it i mean uh, there were not so if there is a law then it is okay or it is still unethical. Well, I mean, I didn't understand. It's an I mean, between difference between ethics and law. So basically, as I have already stated, that a particular technology in itself is not wrong. For example, mm -hmm. the genetic editing thing. It is a very uh, futuristic technology because mm -hmm. it can prevent certain diseases, mm -hmm. genetic diseases mm -hmm. which cannot be cured. So we need to have proper guidelines which will suggest that what at up to what extent we can edit a particular gene or we can do this particular use this technology because uh, if we go from the to the unethical part what could happen there is the manipulation of the gene could lead to the production of uh, the uh, I mean those babies that are genetically edited mm -hmm. designer babies that there will be possible. better babies no they won't yes, have sir, diseases but, but that would go against the nature also one no no even transplanting a liver is against nature but sir uh, it is against nature but uh, creation of the super babies is the concept no what is the ethics involved I have still not understood if somebody does that to improve the child health yes sir what is wrong with so there is nothing wrong in improving the health. Mm. But sir, uh, what I'm trying to imply over here is mm. uh, the technology could be misused in future also by the scientists because they have the power to manipulate the genes. Mm -hmm. So they can create, they are, uh, I'm able to put it. Okay, fine. Let us forget this. Tell me, uh, are you proud to be an Indian? Yes. Sir. Why? So, because first of all, India is such a diverse nation. Mm -hmm. It provides us lots of cultural diversity and people uh, on a daily basis that we talk to. And we are co-existing. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, uh, I think as compared to the countries around us, mm -hmm. we have democracy mm -hmm. in our nation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we kill the girl, child, we rape women whenever, we, wherever, anywhere. We butcher people. Yes, sir. So, there are loopholes. Mm -hmm. but Big uh, loopholes. Yes sir, and uh, that needs to be corrected, mm. but uh, when we compare it with other nations, Which especially around us like uh, Pakistan and the communist countries mm. like China and uh, uh, Russia, there the people do not have the freedom of speech. Russia they, is a communist country? So it's a socialist country, mm -hmm. so China I mean, mm. and uh, they do not have the freedom of speech. Mm. Here in India we have got our right that we can speak up against anything which we dislike and which we do not agree with. Okay, democracy, one thing you said. Yes, what sir. Is? So democracy, diversity mm. and uh, I think the speed with which we are developing mm. and uh, the opportunities mm -hmm. uh, that we are getting in the country because mm. uh, that is also... What about science and technology? Have yes, we sir. done much in science and technology? Any Nobel laureates in physics, chemistry? 
biology so, in your line, biotechnology, any Nobel laureate? So Nobel laureate recently, uh, Abhijit uh, Banerjee won. He worked in, he was not a Nobel laureate working in IEG in Delhi. He has worked abroad. So before also, uh, anyway. <laughs> Which GM seeds are allowed in India? Sir, only BT cotton. Why others are not allowed? Sir, there is a lot of skepticism against the GM crops. That they would lead to... Does the government want to introduce? Yes. Uh, but there would be need of... But then what is the hurdle if government wants it? There is a hurdle. Sir, uh, there is a uh, there is skepticism regarding... Skepticism? Uh, 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 yeah. Some Within the government? So with the people, especially the so farmers. It is the people's voice which the government is hearing, is that what you're saying? But sir, there is not... No, 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 that's not the point. You're not well correctly informed. Supreme Court has put a stop to it. Okay. Government is very keen to introduce GM mustard. Yes. Developed in yes. Pusa by Mr. Penter, former Vice Chancellor of Delhi University. But Supreme Court says, unless we are very sure of its impact on health, etc., unless we are, we will not allow it. Supreme Court has put a stop. You read up on this, eh? don't say the people are against it and all that. India, after the COP21, was it COP21 Paris? Yes, sir. It was COP21? Yes, sir. After it, India adopted NDCs. Yes, sir. Name those NDCs which India adopted. So the first one is that we would reduce the emission, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, to thirty to thirty-five percent of our GDP by two thousand thirty. Emission, not emission. emission. Of greenhouse gases. Emission intensity. Yes, sir. Emission intensity of greenhouse gases. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. By uh, thirty to thirty-five percent. Uh -huh. Second one is that we will replace the fossil fuel uh, that we are using to non-fossil fuel products uh, right. by uh, around 40 percent yes and uh, also we will create the uh, these uh, carbon sinks so what efforts government is making what progress government is making towards these specific progress one two three so we have national action uh, programs the one is the solar mission that we have the national solar, uh, solar mission so where have we reached in that. Sir, we will, uh, there are... No, sir, we will. Where have we reached? Sir, exact number I might not remember. So, apart from that, uh, the... What other uh, initiatives we have taken? Yes, sir. So, <coughs> Fame India mission is coming, where we are intending to introduce the electronic vehicles. Mm -hmm. And uh, BS6 norms has been introduced. Uh, which will replace, uh, which will directly jump from BS4 to BS6, uh, which will reduce the sulfur and the nitrogen oxide content, and it will also reduce the greenhouse gas effect. Uh, and we have improved, slightly improved the forest cover. Yes, sir. Thank you right. Very much. So these are some of the. Now, <clears throat> what is ninth schedule in the constitution? So the ninth schedule is related to the properties. Uh, so the ninth schedule was introduced. If any any law made by parliament is placed in the ninth schedule, it will be immune from judicial review. Yes, sir. That is the meaning of ninth schedule. Okay. But sir, I think. Uh, after the Keshwan and Bharti's case. Uh, not Keshwan and Bharti. 24th April 1907. No, you are, you are right. Yes, Supreme Court says we can still interfere under certain circumstances. But that was not Keshwan and Bharti case, that was <coughs> Coelho case of 2007. IR Coelho. Alright. What is the importance of 73 and 74 amendments in the Constitution? So they expanded uh, the democracy again by providing the third tier to the uh, people like the, the panchayats and municipal communities were introduced. And they devolved political power to the local bodies. Very simple. Use simple language. Now, 
gender justice gender justice supreme court has rendered some landmark judgments to promote gender justice can you name some Sir, uh, Sabri Mala Temple. Uh, okay, one Sabri Mala. Next. Sir, Triple Talaq. Triple Talaq, very nice. Sir, uh, this uh, Section 377 has been decriminalized. Mm -hmm. And sir, uh, this adultery has been made, uh, again, decriminalized. Adultery has been decriminalized. Okay. Yes, good. <clears throat> and yesterday's judgment? Yes, sir. Eh, command positions can be commanded by women now. All right. What is the size of uh, uh, GDP of uh, UP? How big is the economy? Sir, I think hmm? Fifteen and a half lakh crores. 15.5 lakh crores. It's number third economy in the country. What is the state of human development index among the states and territories? Where does the UP stand? Sign. Extremely poor. Third from the bottom. Not third. Yes, third from the bottom. Bihar, worst. Jharkhand, then you. All right, we close the interview. How do you think you have performed? So I. We have asked questions basically on your bio data. Yes. You are from UP? Yes. Uh, I have just asked you about two questions. LT, Human Development Index, mm -hmm. UDP. Yes. There can be more questions. Of course, you will ask a question on law and order yes. and <clears throat> cow, uh, cow ban, yes. how it is disrupting the rural economy. Those were questions. Then we have asked you about Constitutional issues, yes. ninth schedule, mm -hmm. 73, 74 amendment, etc. Mm -hmm. Then we have asked you psychology, which is your subject. And we have asked you on biotechnology. In mm -hmm. you have to us about the region. You prepare 10 15 questions on each of these. When, when, uh, when is your third March? Mm -hmm. You have still time. Yes. So you list out certain questions and ask. Mm -hmm. And finally, current affairs. In current affairs, you've been asked about uh, Vivas, Vishwas, yes, etc. Uh, then <clears throat> uh, you can be asked question about budget. Yes. Why are you asking about Trump? What is the importance of Mr. Trump? Do you want to read it? Yes, you can read it. Strengthen your own subjects. Knowledge of your own subjects. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.